a cool, breezy night in the Charm City, Baltimore, Maryland. Tonight, we're in College Park, about a half an hour south of Baltimore, home of Bird Stadium, and the two and three Maryland Terrapins. They're hoping to turn their season around with an upset of the 6-0 and and number eight Clemson Tigers. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. Now the Clemson fan base breathed a collective sigh of relief after it was revealed this week that their star quarterback Taj Boyd was not seriously injured on a play against Boston College last week. The ACC's leader in total offense will not only play tonight, he will start and he is expected to be at 100%. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to College Park. Alongside my partner, Brian Greasy, I'm Clay Matvick. And this Clemson team, Brian, is the talk of the ACC. 6-0, another great start for the Tigers. They have beaten three top 25 teams, but the naysayers contend they've been in this spot before only to disappoint. Why might this group be different? Well, there have been some times where they haven't played as well, and last year was certainly a, p a part of that. Six and seven, something that they could build off a very bitter taste in their mouth. And Dabo Sweeney has an opportunity really to get this team going in the right direction. He did it early this year with three big wins. Tonight is a trap potentially, but to me the big difference is offense. This offense of Chad Morris, new offensive coordinator, comes over from Tulsa. He has really spread the field, but his go-to guy is Sammy Watkins, a true freshman. And Sammy's just all over the field. He's going to catch it. He's going to run it. He's going to return. He's just been so explosive as a young player that he has been a big difference for them. Well, as hot as Clemson has been, Maryland has really cooled off since a season-opening win right here over Miami. They are one and three since then. Randy Edsel knows this team needs a spark. He's making a change of quarterback. Yeah, C.J. Brown's going to get the start tonight over Daniel Bryan. I think it's because of his feet. Last week, he was very good against Georgia Tech at a 77-yard touchdown run, but Maryland needs more balance on their offense, and C.J. Brown gives them that with the option in the zone read game, and their new offensive coordinator, Gary Croton, likes what he sees from his young quarterback. Maryland in their red uniforms tonight. 68 degrees and we are underway as Maryland has won the toss Clemson will start with the football and they are going to start from the three yard line instead of taking a knee Sammy Watkins tries to bring it out of the end zone and good coverage by the Terrapins yeah an early mistake from young Sammy Watkins I know he has a lot of confidence but that's not a ball you want to bring out of the end zone you put your quarterback in a tough situation starting from the four yard line but Taj Boyd is very calm and cool can handle it he has been superb so far 15 touchdowns already in this season to only two interceptions Clemson fans very happy to see him out on the field tonight after that scary looking injury last week against BC here is the first play from scrimmage it's Andre Ellington taking it up the middle good run on first down a pickup of seven second down and three is Alex Twine a 17 year old freshman makes the tackle for Maryland a lot of young players on the field tonight for both sides yeah well, on Maryland defensively starting five freshmen so they've got their hands full all three of their starting linebackers out for tonight second down and three it's Ellington again gets out of a tackle makes his way to the 20 a gain of nine and a first down for the Clemson Tigers Eric Franklin makes the tackle and knowing that Maryland is is a little light on the defensive side I think that offensive corner Chad Morris is going to run this ball almost exclusively early in this game to see how those linebackers react to this up-tempo offense first and 15 pressure stepping up his Boyd. he's got a seam and he's going to get the penalty yardage back and much more. Lauren Gorey makes the tackle, but it's a gain of 13. Yeah, this is what Todd Brad for the defensive coordinator doesn't want to see. Let it roll, guys. He just comes right up the middle. Nobody open downfield. And when Taj Boyd goes north and south up the field, he makes positive yards. And Maryland's got to force him to go east and west. That's where they can get him into making some bad decisions. This team is out of the gun 80 percent of the time they're going to try and get 80 snaps in tonight Brian here comes second and two for Boyd and company
to the outside. That is Dwayne Allen, the talented tight end. And he's got enough for the first down. It's a gain of five before Twine makes the tackle. They'll move the chains. Yeah, you know, we were talking with Chad Morris. He thinks that Dwayne Allen is really the, the joker in this offense, the guy that can play in any hand. He can line up anywhere. Defenses don't know how to declare him. Is he a wide receiver or is he a tight end? Do we play nickel or do we play base? He's the guy that really creates confusion for defenses. This is Ellington straight up the middle. Volano the tackle it's a gain of seven and you were talking about Alan Bryan I mean he is considered by many the number one draft eligible tight end this year well he's certainly got a lot of talent the thing that impressed me watching film I mean he catches the ball he can run down the field but he is great in blocking he's been used in a lot of instances as a fullback you see him lined up here he is right here in the backfield he's going to be used as a fullback in a lot of this formation offense for Chad Morris another run for this Clemson offense that's their fifth run against one pass so far and it's a gain of four and another first down this time DJ Howard the redshirt freshman running back with the carry his first of the game they really want to get this running game going and Clemson despite all the formations and all the speed and all the horizontal stretch they still want to be a downhill physical two back running team and that's where I think Ellington comes in to to a factor. First and 10 from the Clemson 43. This is Sammy Watkins. Inside the 25 yard line, Titus Till finally runs him out at the 23 yard line, a gain of 34. Watch the blocking on the outside. The receiver comes down, gets a block, and then the Offensive line pulls around. You give Sammy Watkins any kind of edge and to the second level, he's got the 10-400 type of speed that will make you pay. This run defense for Maryland last in the ACC, giving up nearly 200 yards per game. To the six, Ellington, the leading rusher for Clemson. He has fought through a hamstring and a thigh bruise this season. Last week, 117 yards and 22 carries. Yeah, we were talking with the coach and said, hey, he hadn't practiced in three weeks because of all those injuries. This was the first week that he was able to practice, and it's very hard to play in a game when you don't practice. Get your timing down. He's looked the best this week that he has all season. Twelfth play. Second down and goal. It's Ellington again. And he's going to be stopped at the three. Now, when we were talking with Chad Morris this week, Brian, I mean, he said he'd like to get Ellington 16 to 20 touches. Uh, I mean, this guy has got a definitive game plan. <laughs> hey, I'd, I'd like to get a lot of these guys a lot of touches. I'd like to get Dwayne <laughs> Allen a lot of touches. I'd like to get Watkins, Hopkins, you know, Ellington. We haven't even talked about Taj Boyd, you know. Right. He can run the ball. Ellington already seven touches on this drive. And he's out there behind Boyd. Third down and goal from the three. Boyd keeps it, spins toward the goal line. He stacked up, fourth down. Joe Volano, who else plugging that hole? Boyd's trying to read the defensive end there. Looked like there was a little bit of miscommunication or confusion, and Todd just decides to try to take that ball up and muscle it in, but a little bit of confusion on that last play as to where the read was where the option pitch man was going to be with Watkins and nice job by Taj Boyd of just trying to get it himself and don't turn the football over Chandler Catanzaro coming on coming off a five for five weekend field goal attempts including a 47 yarder against BC this from 19 just a chip shot and he nails it. Well, Clemson held the three on this opening drive, which was very impressive. It started at the four yard line. Covers 13 plays. It's 3 0 Tigers. 3 0 Clemson after an opening drive that results in a field goal. Maryland head coach Randy Edsel making a big change in offense this week. For more on that, let's go down to Allison Williams. Yes, Clay. Coach Edsel deciding to go with C.J. Brown at quarterback. He is making his first career start. Coach Edsel said he needed somebody that gives them an extra dimension, and he likes the energy that Brown gives him. Offensive coordinator Gary Groton said he just likes that faster pace. He's more comfortable with it. He's got great feet and is explosive, and that when they put him in, their run game really opened up. He said that extra mobility just puts more stress on the defense. Guys, I've been watching C.J. on the side. 
sidelines. He seems calm, collected, took a few warm up throws, and all of his teammates have come over, including Danny O'Brien, Danny O'Brien, giving him a hug and a high five, pat him on the shoulder pads. Offensive lineman Max Garcia came over, gave him a big hug, said, We got your back out there, buddy. We got your back. Not an easy decision for the coaching staff, but it's been made. And Maryland is going to get their first series. On the return, Avery Graham. All right, so C.J. Brown getting the start. He's in our impact players presented by Lee Jeans. Yeah, and as Allison said, he's going to try to make an impact with his feet. Last week, a 77-yard touchdown run against Georgia Tech. I think that element is why they've made this change. And on defense for Clemson, there's nobody better on that defense than their three technique. Brandon Thompson at the defensive tackle position. He creates a lot of havoc. Brown starts out of the shotgun and hands off to David Megan. First year as the feature back for Megan. And Carrico Hawkins makes the stop, the middle linebacker. No gain, so second down and 10. Quickly out of the gun. Brown sets up the throw. It's a short pass. Coming back for it is the tight end, Matt Furstenberg. He makes the catch. Second in the ACC in catches by a tight end. It's a gain of five. Yeah, and it's not it's not often that you have your backup quarterback that actually likes to run the offense faster than the starting quarterback. That's kind of abnormal, but C.J. Brown understands and gets the ball out quick. Quick strike for a first down. Ronnie Tyler, the senior receiver, makes the catch. Gary Croton says he's a no-nonsense kind of quarterback. You know, he gets in the huddle or no huddle, and he wants to play and wants to get going. He's very serious about his job as a quarterback and he's already got a first down and a completion. Now sprinting out here is Brown. He pitches to Ronnie Tyler and he's going to get five on that play. Second down and five we'll call it. As you're now into plus territory here's Megan. It's going to be a short game. It's so important when you have a new quarterback for you to have success early not just for his confidence but also the defense may or may not have prepared as much for this kind of quarterback, and you got to take them by surprise a little bit yeah. before they get a book on you. So this drive is important for both sides of the ball. We were talking with uh, Clemson defensive coordinator Kevin Steele before the game. Didn't know for sure who was going to start for Maryland. Had to prepare for both this week. Out of the gun, Brown rolling to his right, looking downfield, directing traffic. Now has to step out of bounds. And he was escorted out by Rennie Moore, the defensive tackle, the 6'3", 265-pound senior. It's a loss of one. Yeah, just good coverage downfield by Clemson. They played a little bit of zone on the back end and tried to buy C.J. Brown some time by rolling him out. I like getting him outside the pocket where he can have a run-pass option, but just credit Clemson's defense on the back end with good coverage. So Nick Ferrara comes out to punt. And Sammy Watkins, very dangerous. Standing at the 10 yard line for Clemson. What a freshman year he is having. Ferrara handles both the kicking and the punting duties for the Terps. And a fair catch called for and it's muffed. Watkins can't handle it and the Terps have it. What a mistake by the rookie and Austin Walker makes him pay. Sometimes being a little bit overconfident can come back to bite you and Sammy Watkins wants to make a play wants to field this ball just gets away from a little bit. You wonder if the wind had something to do with him judging that football but you never want to catch a punt over your shoulder at that point you just got to let it drop. Golden opportunity for Maryland. First down and goal to go from the nine. He'll hand it off. Make it to the goal line touchdown. David Megan as Maryland capitalizes on the turnover. And Ferrara with the extra point, it's seven to three. Young players, a lot of young players on the field making mistakes for Clemson. Watkins with the fumble. And Maryland, their young quarterback, Megan right up the middle. Great conversion. When you come into Bird Stadium, you better fear the turtle. 
And number eight Clemson is behind now 7 3 here in the first quarter after a turnover leads to points. Maryland has done a good job Brian of turning teams over. That's the 14th turnover forced by Maryland. Now Sammy Watkins who's had a hard time on returns decides to take a knee this time. First down at 10 from the 20 for the Tigers. Play fake. Boyd looking to throw for just the second time tonight and nearly picked off in the secondary. Cameron Chisholm, the third year starter at cornerback for Maryland, almost picked that off. Wow, that was a that was a big time opportunity missed by Maryland. Maryland's just playing a two deep coverage and he was rolled up as the corner. And Taj Boyd, very aggressive, tried to fit that football in on a naked route. That's not normally where that football goes. And a missed opportunity by Maryland. Boyd has only thrown two picks this year. Clemson is a team through 14, so that number weighed down in 2011. Now out of the gun. Hands off. Ellington, a big run right up the middle. Finally pulled down from behind at the 43, a 22-yard run for Andre Ellington. Franklin made the tackle. The speed of Clemson. Watch on the outside. The linebacker comes right up to gut, but there's two guys free in the backfield, but the speed of Ellington getting up the field so fast, the linebacker, Goree, 53, not able to get there, and Ellington makes him pay. Already 60 yards on the ground for Andre Ellington. There's Andre Ellington on first down. He's going to get four on that carry. Eric Franklin making the stop. You get the sense that this Clemson offense is not going to be held back for long. And it's just a matter of time. And uh, if Taj Boyd gets uh, calibrated correctly, that this, this offense can take off in a hurry. There's Boyd. Oh, threw it right to the defender. Intercepted by Chisholm. He's off to the races. Goodbye, touchdown. A 46-yard gimme for Cameron Chisholm. And Bird Stadium's in an uproar. Andy Etzel told us if they're going to stay in this game, they have got to create turnovers and they've got to score on defense. They have now done both. 14 to 3 Terrapins. Clemson for the first time this season turning it over more than once in a game. Davo Sweeney's going to talk to his quarterback. Not sure what he's looking at here. You go back, look at. Chisholm is right here. He's going to play a two deep coverage and Taj Boyd just not on the same page. I have no idea where he's trying to throw that football but Hopkins had a read and Boyd had a read and they weren't on the same page and that's just what you cannot do. All 14 points for the Terrapins tonight off Clemson turnovers. Watkins. Look out. He gets the corner. And the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the 31 by the kicker, Ferrara. A 70-yard return for Sammy Watkins. He's made a couple of mistakes in the return game tonight, but this is no mistake. Well, make no mistake, Sammy Watkins is fast. And you give him the football in space, and you're not going to catch him. Give credit to the kicker, Ferrar. Look at Ferrar take the right angle and save a touchdown here. Great play by him, but Sammy Watkins, if you get in the ball, it's only a matter of time. He's going to make a play. Watkins ranked the number four wide receiver in the nation on the ESPNU 150 last year out of South Fort Myers High School. He's playing in the ACC now and making a big splash. Ellington. On first down, we'll get two. Volano already has about a half dozen tackles tonight, picking up where he left off from a week ago. Volano's a great story. I mean, he's one of those hard-nosed guys, works hard, very smart, tough leader, captain of this defense, and it's not very often you see defensive tackles make that many plays. Boyd rolling out over the middle, and it's complete to the 14-yard line. Sharon Peak, big receiver, 6'3, 205 pounds. And tell you what, 
We were down on the field before this game, Brian, and physically, there isn't a bigger group of receivers in the country than these guys. No, they're, they're definitely, they passed the eye test uh, on the field, and Peak did a nice job going back down to get that football. Taj Boyd still not on on point but Chad Morris is going to continue to give him opportunities on first down and 10 from the 14 Ellington inside the five Titus Till runs into him to bring him down but it's a gain of 12 first down and goal to go for the Tigers again that's a very similar style of play they bring Watkins in motion on a speed sweep and that affects the defense affects the linebackers affects the safeties and then they run the trap right up the middle with Ellington that is very difficult to defend and a big reason why Clemson has been so good on offense this year. Ellington. will get it. Touchdown Tigers. That drive set up by the kickoff return by Sammy Watkins a quick response to the Maryland touchdown. Well, we talked about it when you have adversity how do you respond that's almost as important as whether you get back and certainly you found something out about your offense you found something out about your offensive line and your running backs and Sammy Watkins to respond in that fashion. Ken Zaro comes on for the extra point and it's 14 to 10 the longest kick return for Clemson this year sets up a touchdown for Ellington. Short kickoff. And Avery Graham checked that Justice Pickett with a 16 yard return. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, back here in Maryland, there is Furstenberg on the catch. Deep into Clemson territory, steps out of a tackle, and is knocked out of bounds at the 31. A catch and run, a play of 40. Great throw from CJ Brown. The Suck on the linebackers from play action. That ball thrown perfectly to Furstenberg and great effort on the back end. It was an impressive throw by the sophomore quarterback. Brown gets out of trouble and has a lane. Knocked out of bounds at the five by Darius Robinson. A run of 23 for the Maryland quarterback, and that's why Edsel started it. <laughs> I can see why he started it. What a fantastic play, athletic play by C.J. Brown. Xavier Brewer, the corner, had him dead to rights in the backfield. They played that perfectly from Clemson's standpoint, just didn't make the tackle, and then C.J. Brown outran everybody else. A career-high 124 and a touchdown on just nine carries last week. And Brown has two carries for 23 tonight so far, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. Yeah, they didn't get it off in time. Maryland coming into this game, Greece, 20 first quarter points, 14 tonight on the number eight team in the country. Well, they certainly got the momentum going in the right direction, up four, and they've made the plays on defense when they needed to. Their offense is gaining some confidence we'll see what happens Maryland leading 14 to 10 as we get ready to start the second quarter Clay Mantic and Brian Greasy back here at Bird Stadium Maryland has made plays on special teams and defense they have the lead now they're first and goal from the five a great opportunity at the five yard line to go up 11 here if they can punch this ball in early in the second quarter uh, those are the kinds of opportunities that you have to take advantage of against this a good team like Clemson especially at home Randy Edsel He's had a tough time against ranked opponents. Just one win against 18 losses. Maybe tonight in his first year at Maryland, he can pull off a big one here against number eight. Brown, the handoff to Megan. And he'll be dragged down inside the five after a gain of two. Brandon Thompson, the big nose guard for Clemson, makes the stop. That's big Brandon Thompson. It's going to be hard to run inside the tackles against Clemson. Brandon Thompson is known for stopping the run in there as well as Rennie Moore. It's difficult. If they're going to score here, I like to get C.J. Brown out on the outside where he can use his feet, maybe pitch it. Making his first career start tonight at quarterback for the Terps. Brown to a wide open Megan. Nobody there. He sashays in for a seven-yard play.
Jones and came with pressure. C.J. Brown recognized it, read it, and then threw a nice, accurate ball on the outside to Meggett, who finished it off. Twenty-one to ten. You live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. They bring him right all up the middle. There's nobody left. Just float it out to your back, and you're up 11 on Clemson. That's men's basketball coach Midnight Madness last night. And Mark Turgeon is down with Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Clay. Coach Turgeon, your first Midnight Madness, your first Maryland Madness here. What were your thoughts after you kicked off the college basketball season? Well, it was what I expected. We had a great turnout. We had a great alumni game. We had a lot of former players come back. The, the lockout, NBA lockout helped us. So it was a great night, and, and it was what I expected. You have the tough task of replacing a legend here in Gary Williams, and this is an interesting era in Maryland sports with Coach Edsel in his first year. How would you describe some of the common connections you two share, both taking over and, and sharing your first year? Well, we've done it at other programs, so we know it works. So we just got to, people got to be patient with us and let us, let us do our job. And Randy's a great, great guy. He's doing a tremendous job. Great crowd tonight. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, Comcast Center is going to be rocking for us. It'll be a lot of fun. Coach Surgeon, thanks for the time. All right, thanks for having me on. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Allison. There is a catch for Sammy Watkins, a gain of nine as Rouson makes the tackle. They're excited here at Maryland about their athletic department. Yeah. Uh, he didn't come out like on a motorcycle or anything <laughs> with a costume on. I mean, I thought that's what the, you know, March, the, the Midnight Madness is all about. He just walked down the stairs. Come on. Taj Boyd throws to the outside, and that's too tall as well. Dwayne Allen, the tight end, the intended receiver. Alex Twine, the 17-year-old linebacker, doing a good job in coverage. Yeah, they checked that at the line of scrimmage there. They'll, they'll flex Dwayne Allen out as a wide receiver. And if they like the matchup, which they did against the linebacker Twine as a true freshman, they're going to take their shot downfield with Dwayne Allen. That ball just overthrown. Boyd now 4 for 10, just 28 yards, and he has thrown a pick. Third and nine. Time to throw. Another crossing route, this time DeAndre Hopkins giving up ground, trying to gain ground, and he is dropped at the 40. Dexter McDougal making the stop. It's a loss of four, and Clemson will have to kick. Maryland, you can see gaining confidence with every series. They play man-to-man -man coverage on the weak side. McDougal has coverage on Hopkins, just trails him and gets, gets enough of him to let the rest of his team come and finish off. But... A great stop by Maryland defensively. So Zimmerman comes on for Clemson. He leads the conference in punting with a 43-yard average. Hoping to flip the field here. Tony Logan standing at the 12th. Logan steps up, fields it at the 15, gets out of a possible tackle, finds a seam up the middle and close to the 40. Tony Logan given the Terrapins good field position with 11 minutes to go before halftime and this stadium has some energy. Terrapins lead at 21-10. Maryland already with 21 first half points. That is more points than they have scored in a first half at any time this season. There's still 9.37 to go in the half. Brown all kinds of time. Throws it up. Boy, this is going to be almost picked off at the 20. Should have been intercepted by Sensabon. He can't believe it. This is the this is the part of C.J. Brown's game that he needs to continue to work on. This ball, you just can't throw it up for grabs. This is a punt, and Sensabaugh, you got to come down with that with that catch. And in the DB meeting room this uh, coming week, he'll get a lot of flack from his coach, but also the other players. You just can't let those opportunities slip by. Sometimes they're too easy. <laughs> Here's Brown. Oh, he can run. Inside the 35, and he laid a hit on Rashard Hall, who was supposed to be doing the hitting. Yeah, run it's just 15. a zone read right up the middle. You see the athletic ability and Maryland's offense. This is not what they looked like a week ago. They didn't have this kind of balance. So first and 10, Brown tucks and runs. Touchdown, C.J. Brown. From 21 yards out.
making the most of his first career start. 77 yards a week ago against Georgia Tech, probably what earned him the start in this game and more the same this week, and Randy Etzel loves it. Twenty eight to ten Maryland as Ferrara attacks on the extra point Brown now seven carries for 70 yards in this touchdown. Looking at him pregame he didn't look that fast but I'm a believer now in CJ Brown. CJ Brown there he is number 16 in red 137 total yards two touchdowns tonight one running one passing Randy Edsel it appears made the right decision going with this guy. Well, they didn't know what they had. They, they really hadn't seen C.J. play a whole lot of football. He's only played a couple of snaps in two games. And from what they saw a week ago at Georgia Tech, they certainly saw something they liked, and they're seeing more of it tonight. Nick Ferrara kicks it to Sammy Watkins. He'll take it from the one-yard line. And gets it out to the 27 for Clemson. Play fake. Boyd finds room on the outside, and... Gets into the secondary, just short of midfield. Eric Franklin brings him down, but it's a 12-yard pickup. Tosh Boyd hasn't made a big living keeping the, the ball on the zone read, but when there's certainly a crash on the end, he will keep it, and he has just enough speed to get to the outside. Again, coming out that strained left hip a week ago, but seeing no ill effects here tonight. A little pressure, quick release. Gets it in the hands of Hopkins. And he has trouble getting back to the line of scrimmage. No pickup. We've seen some pretty good pursuit by Maryland defensively. Despite the fact these are young guys, uh, they can run. And three freshmen at the linebacker position may not always know where they're going, but when they make a decision to go, they can get there in a hurry. Boyd. Man open to the 36 yard line the first catch of the night for Martavis Bryant a first down for the Tigers after the 16 yard pass play. When you operate almost exclusively in a two minute offense like Clemson does you know, being down 18 points is not a huge deal because you know that you can score relatively quickly. We're back up out of the gun here ninth play of the drive over the middle caught inside the 10. Down to the six yard line, the third string tight end, Sam Cooper, first down and goal to go. Great throw, threading the needle over the linebacker, off a of play action. There's not a lot of space to fit that football, and credit Cooper for coming up with it after the, uh, the hit. But Taj Boyd is not afraid to continue to pull the trigger. That's what you need. This offense appears to be back in sync now with 5.33 to play. Boyd to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, DeAndre Hopkins. What a catch. And what a throw by Taj Boyd. Perfectly thrown football right on the pylon. When you throw the fade route, you want to put it right on the pylon. And if that ball wasn't caught, it would have hit the pylon. So it's perfect. How about 10 plays in only three minutes and 10 seconds? It's hard to do. Captain Zaro for the extra point. And it's 28-17 as Hopkins makes his seventh career touchdown reception. And Boyd at Clemson need it. Taj Boyd has a belief. And if he continues to play, continues to give his guys opportunities, they will make plays for him. And Hopkins did it right there. Twenty eight seventeen now Maryland on top with five twenty eight to go before halftime Taj Boyd was not sharp to start the night but he's ironing some things out Brian certainly that last drive he was fantastic not only five or six for forty seven yards but that first down conversion on short yards where he kept it himself was big as well. This is Avery Graham inside the five yard line. And he is going to be stacked up at the 15th. David Meggett. Cuts it back up. He'll get four. Second down and six. So Georgia Tech, one of the undefeated teams in the ACC coming into the weekend, gets beat today. And now Clemson 
although they've uh, come back here in the first half, find themselves down just before halftime. They came into this game 6-0. We got to that point in the year where you felt like there might be some upsets, you know. It's some of these teams that have played non-conference games against weak opponents, and they get built up and pumped up, and then they start to get into their conference play and realize, wait a minute, the teams in our conference are pretty good too. So yeah. it's not surprising that we've seen games like we're seeing right here at Maryland as well as uh, Georgia Tech, Virginia. And the Terrapins are going to be content to have an 11 point lead going into the locker room and they get a nice round of applause from this bird stadium crowd as they should 28 17 the terrapins lead it at the half let's go down to allison williams thank you clay coach ed saw you give cj brown his first start and he certainly has been very effective for you what has he provided you in this first half well, it's, it's really been a team effort in the first half, and he's, he's utilized his legs uh, when he's needed to. What does he do for this offense that you were looking for? You talked about that added dimension. He's put up you know, 28 points here, so, so what is it about him? Well, it's his it's ability to use his legs, and he's a good enough passer, and it just puts a little bit more pressure on the defense. Defensively, the first quarter, you seem to do a good job of getting to Taj Boyd. What do you need to continue to do in the second half? Well, we just got to do our job. I mean, uh, they're a very talented offense, and uh, they got some very good weapons, but we just got to keep playing hard and just execute our assignments. Thank you, Coach. Alrighty. Clay. Brown, 155 yards of total offense, a running touchdown and a passing touchdown. 28-17, Maryland hoping for the upset tonight. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. Almost 48,000 here at Bird Stadium. Very happy with the first half. It's 28-17. The Terrapins on top of the number eight team in the country. And C.J. Brown, the starting quarterback for the Terrapins, having an excellent first half. We'll talk more about that in a moment as he gets prepared to take the field to start the second half. Dawson Zimmerman has it teed up. Pickett and Graham are back deep for Maryland. And we're underway here in the second half. This is Avery Graham to the 20-yard line and dropped at the 20. All right, Brown ready to go back to work after an excellent first half. First down and 10 from the 22-yard line. Brown keeps it. And he's got a first down on that carry. Hawkins makes the tackle, but a gain of 11 for C.J. Brown. And it's just the option play, the dive option. He'll have the dive. He's going to read the defensive tackle. Defensive tackle closes, and he keeps it. And it's a loaded option because they block the defensive end. You see an automatic adjustment from Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator that's taking advantage again of Clemson's defensive front. And stepping up to run is Brown. He's got... Enough for the first down and a couple more. This is why Randy Edsel started C.J. Brown. That dynamic he gives the team with his feet. It's a gain of 13. When you have a mobile quarterback, it makes everybody look good. The coach, the offensive line, the receivers. He's doing a great job. So now Brown goes to the air again. This one is dropped. Quinton McCree looked like he had it. Started to take steps upfield and dropped it. Second down and 10 now. It was the perfect play call by Gary Croton. They brought the blitz. The ball was thrown a little bit out in front of McCree. And I think he got a little bit too nervous about coming over the middle. Maybe somebody was going to hit him. But it was great potential for that play. Maryland getting close to the red zone here tonight with their two for two with a couple of touchdowns. And now they're in it, inside the 20, inside the 10, Furstenberg, touchdown, Maryland. The big tight end for the Terrapins. Rambles in on a 22-yard reception. Great play call from Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator that's come over in his first year from LSU with the slow screen to the tight end, caught it just the right time. Big touchdown for Maryland. And Ferraro with the extra point. How about that? On the opening series of the second half, the Maryland Terrapins showing the first half was no fluke.
Randy Itzel, who grew up 70 miles from here, has landed his dream job in Maryland, and he's got this team on top of the number eight program in the country, 35-17. He's fired up on that Maryland sideline right now. Jerron Brown trips out over the 20-yard line. It's now Clemson really up against it. Boyd throws it to Ellington, and he is smacked at the 25, incomplete. What a hit by Rousen. Yeah, Mario Rousen, the uh, redshirt freshman in man-to-man -man coverage, reads the flat route, comes up, clean hit with the shoulder right into the chest of Ellington. And that's the kind of physical statement that you want to make in a game like this coming out in the second half up 18 that you're going to play defense. Rouse one of five freshmen starting on this defense tonight for Maryland and doing an admirable job. And look at this play. Bellamy is dumped by Chisholm and Twine. It's a loss of two. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, I talked to Coach Sweeney at the half about how to stop C.J. Brown in this offense, and he didn't feel like it was about adjustments. He felt like it was about energy. He said, we've been in the right positions. We just haven't made the tackles. We have to finish our plays. And overall, guys, he reiterated what he told me before the game. He said, we have to focus on Clemson. This is about us. Play. Thanks, Allison. Boyd is complete to Dwayne Allen, but short of the first down fourth down for the Tigers well and I respectfully disagree with Abo Sweeney I think if they're going to play man coverage on the back end and run their guys down the field there's nobody left that can tackle CJ Brown one on one in space so they have got to figure out a way to play some zone and either have a spy on Brown or play the zones where you can read and react and come up and gang tackle him. What's impressed me about C.J. Brown tonight, Greece, is not what he's done with his feet, but because we kind of expected he could do that, it's what he's done throwing the football. He's been very accurate, very efficient. Zimmerman's kick to Tony Logan, and he muffed it. It looked like he got it back. He did at about the 27-yard line. Well, Clemson has lost before as a ranked team to Maryland. Davo Sweeney is hoping to avoid that happening again tonight. 121 on the ground for Brown. And he'll start this series at the 28 of Maryland. Looking to throw. Has time to do it. And it's intercepted. Picked off at the 43-yard line by Bashad Breland. And that's the break the Tigers needed. Aggressive play call from Gary Croton. Hard play action. It's man to man on the backside. This ball needs to be thrown a little bit more out in front, but this is just a great play. Undercutting by Breen. I think he caught this ball with one hand. Yeah, he did. Look at that. Just took it with his left hand. Big momentum changer for Crumbs. And as you said, puts him in great position at the 15 yard line. So the second interception thrown by Brown tonight. Or excuse me, the first, pardon me. And Ellington will get it on first down, a pickup of three. Second down and seven. You know, the uh, Maryland Terrapins coming into this game, plus one in turnover margin. They've done a good job protecting the football this year, but now a, a turnover that gives a... Clemson, very good field position. Down 35 to 17. Ellington. That's a big play there. That's a big stumble there because uh, that happened earlier in the game in this situation, and Clemson had to settle for a field goal. And if Maryland, in a sudden change situation like this, can force a field goal from Clemson that would be a huge stop so big third and eight Boyd has been great all year on third down tonight one for three just four yards passing with the team 49 percent on third down for the season Boyd to the end zone did he catch it yes he did oh baby 
Sammy Watkins. Touchdown, Clemson. Boyd threw that where only Watkins could make the catch, and he did. Sammy Watkins has been physical all year. He said the one thing that he needs to work on is going up and getting the football at a high point in traffic. He did it last week in impressive fashion against BC. Another time right there. Now Captain Zaro with the extra point. He's so physical. He's so fast. You've got to play off of him. The thing that makes him so dangerous is when he gets in that jump ball situation, he's going to come down with the football. He's got great hands. This freshman around the country, I mean, he has got a bright future in this game. Well, the thing that uh, was interesting, we were talking with Chad Morris, because Chad Morris came in the spring. Sammy Watkins didn't get to Clemson until July. And so the coaches couldn't have any interaction with him. And the players that were organizing the seven on seven drills went to the coach and said, Coach, this guy's been unbelievable in the summer. I know you haven't been able to get around him, but he is going to be special. It took him three practices to become a starter. Here's Justice Pickett for Maryland. Good return, but there are markers down as he gets to the 33 yard line before you stop. Here's Brown. He'll keep it. And it's going to be about an eight or nine yard pickup. There you go again. There's that zone yep. read play. And Clemson has not figured it out. And we were talking with Gary Croton last night. He said, you know, without the mobility of the quarterback in our offense, all of our running plays were getting squeezed and we weren't getting much production. It's completely changed the game having C.J. Brown run it. On the option, gives it to Pickett. Pickett cuts up to the 49 of Clemson. Justice Pickett. Most of his time has come this year on special teams and in the return game, but there's a big run of 19 yards. And again, now the option. We see the dive, we see him run, and now the third element of this offense is the pitch. And Justice Pickett is the beneficiary of a lot of hard work up front from C.J. Brown setting that play up. He's another true freshman for Maryland. And the speed sweep, Quinton McCree to the 25 yard line. 24 yards before he's brought down by Robinson. This offense is looking eerily similar to the Clemson offense. And what is surprising is that Clemson defensively is taken off guard here. This is the offense they see every day in practice in spring and summer. I'm surprised that they can't find a way to stop this. First and 10, it goes to Pickett. Look at that speed up the sideline inside the five. He is finally brought down. Are they going to mark him back? Yeah, they're going to mark him back closer to the 15. But boy, what speed by Pickett to get upfield. It's a gain of 10. Again, man to man coverage, and they get outside. A linebacker matched up on Pickett is just not fast enough to stay with him. And Gary Croton is pushing all the right buttons right now. Brown lobs it up to the end zone where Pickett was. Being followed by Carrico Hawkins, pretty good coverage by Hawkins, and Brown throws it incomplete. So third and seven. Now as the clock stops with 8-11 to go here in the quarter. In this situation, I, I'm not so sure that I'm just going to drop C.J. Brown back and throw this ball and try to convert. Windows down here are very tight. He hasn't had a whole lot of time in reps with these wide receivers. I'd like to get him out on the move where he can use his, his feet and his speed to make a play. Ninth play of the drive, seven runs on this drive by Maryland. Low snap coming up is Brown. And he'll keep it, plays it safe, well short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down as Quandon Christian makes the tackle. And the field goal unit will come on for Maryland. Just a great decision there because you don't take a chance. You give your field goal kicker an opportunity to come out and make this a 14-point game. So the Terrapins will try to get three of them back after that interception that led to a Clemson touchdown. This will be a 27-yard attempt for Ferrara. Of the hold of Michael Tart. It's good. 
So it's now 38-24 Terrapins with 7.27 to go in the third quarter. Isn't it amazing a guy can be seven games into his collegiate career and already be called a superstar and be a bona fide he is, superstar? He is a bona fide superstar. Uh, ought to be young. I would squib this kick down here. I would not kick it to him. Ferrara leaves it short, and it's Watkins who catches it at about the 18, finds a seam, and it is a good return. Good field position for Clemson to start this series after 38. A lot of time yes. left in this game. There's seven there and a half minutes left in the third quarter, and while Maryland feels really good about being up two touchdowns, they, they've got to start playing some defense here. Taj Boyd will give it to Andre Ellington, and he knifes right up the middle, a big run. It's a foot race. Inside the 10, wrestled down at the 8 by McDougal. A 54-yard run. Every time Clemson takes a slap in the face, they come up off the mat. Watch the blocking up front. A huge hole right up the middle, guys. And then two missed tackles on the back end. You give Andre Ellington. We talk about all these other playmakers, Watkins and Allen. But the original playmaker on this offense was Andre Ellington and cannot sleep on him. Clemson four for four in the red zone tonight with three touchdowns and a field goal. Here they are again. And it's Ellington. And it'll be stopped to the six again at two. So third down and goal coming up. Last time they were down here, third down, Clay, they threw the fade to, to Watkins. He's coming down here. There he is right there. Also out there, Jerron Brown and DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins lined up to the top of your screen. Boyd. That was tipped at the line. Incomplete. Big stop by Maryland as Joe Volano got his hand up and knocked that Boyd pass down. That was a big tip because uh, Watkins was coming open behind the linebacker. Volano sees the quarterback. You can't get there. At least get your arms. There you see Watkins coming right behind the linebacker. That would have been a touchdown. So, and he knew it. Big play by Volano. His dad, Paul, was an All-American defensive lineman here. Very proud of his son, the way he has played this year. So now fourth down a goal. It's Cannonzar to come on out for a 23-yard field goal attempt. He's already hit from 19 tonight. And this kick is up and good. So teams exchanging field goals and their last series respectively. Uh, frankly, this is another demon that they're trying to exercise here. Having lost two of these games to Maryland in the past five years. So they've got a lot of work left uh, to continue their undefeated season. So they're back within 11. There's Tony Logan on the return. And it's a good one for the Terrapins. After the 37, maybe 38 yard line. Zone read again, it's Meggett. And maybe just a yard this time before Courtney Brown drives him down. Danny O'Brien made 15 consecutive starts for Maryland before tonight. C.J. Brown getting the nod. There you see Danny, the sophomore out of North Carolina. You know that he's disappointed, but it was not an easy decision for this coaching staff. It appears that it's been the right one so far as Jeremiah Wilson's in the game a tailback for the first time Brown dropped a loss of two Brandon Thompson with the sack and it's a punting situation for the Terrapins and that's the first time I've seen CJ Brown pull that ball down and run a little bit too quickly didn't go through his reads kind of made up his mind that if he saw any kind of a, a lane he was just going to take off and I think that Clemson converged on it. the first time Clemson's really contained him in the pocket. Fourth punt tonight for Ferrara Hopkins standing at the 20 for the Tigers. He'll run up call for the fair catch. It might have been some contact down there. No penalty flags. It's a 30 yard punt and Clemson will start at the 30. Who do you think is going to be number one. I would have Alabama. Boy, deep downfield. Watkins holds it in at the 30. <laughs> Titus Till made the tackle, but what a catch by the big play rookie for Clemson. 
A gain of 51. Watkins has made a lot of hay running double moves. Another double move right here. A stop and go. They've got to roll Boyd out to buy enough time. That ball right on the money. And it was not easy to catch a ball fully extended running at full speed. You don't realize how hard that is. Watkins made it look easy. Clemson perfect in the red zone tonight. They've scored every time. Here they are again. Boyd keeps it. Cuts it back. Good run on first down. It's a gain of four, maybe five. We talked about Sammy Watkins reminding us of Julio Jones. And in my opinion, he's got better hands than Julio Jones. He has not dropped a pass. And I've watched every game this year. Everything you throw to the kid, he catches. It's like flypaper. He had seven catches for 152 last week against BC. Five for 81 and a touchdown here tonight. Boyd pumps to the end zone. He has a man caught. Touchdown, Watkins. <laughs> he is a man. You know what I love about him? He doesn't get up and do a dance. He doesn't celebrate. He's running to the side. Okay, coach, next play, you want to go for two? Hey, man, throw it to me again. He's just that kind of workmanlike player. That play again, another double move on the outside, a slant and go. And Maryland does not have a corner that can stay with him. Clemson going to go for two, trying to make this a three point game. Boyd pumps, comes back the other way. Caught by Dwayne Allen. And there is a field goal difference in this game now with 325 to go in the third. This is going to quickly become the Sammy Watkins show. You see, and that's after the move. He ran a slant and then got up the field. Again, same place on the field, same kind of touchdown catch to go up and get it. And on the two-point conversion, they ran the throwback screen to the tight end and a great catch away from his body. And Davo Sweeney realized, you know what? We're going to have adversity. And I'm going to have fun when we come back in this football game. The fun is in the winning, yep. as only Dabo can say. The fun's in the winning. And uh, I think it's fantastic. I think he's great for college football. He's been unbelievable for Clemson. And they are right back in this football game. And they were down 18 at one point in this game. Now just three. Justice Pickett. He is buried at the 28-yard line. We'll see how Maryland responds now as the momentum belongs with the visitors. It's taken some time for Gary Croton to learn how to call a game for C.J. Brown. He didn't really know what he had until tonight. He's in LSU the last four years as offensive coordinator. This is going to be a short gain as Pickett runs into the arms of Thompson. And I thought it was interesting what Gary Croton told us. He said, when I got here in the spring, I saw two quarterbacks. Danny O'Brien was the reigning freshman player of the year. But I saw this kid, C.J. Brown, and I really couldn't tell the difference between the two. They were both really good. It wasn't like I had an A and a B player. I felt like I had two A players. Brown was really impressive in that spring game. And here he is dropped. Sacked by Andre Branch, the defensive end, a loss of two, and now a punting situation for Maryland. But the Terrapins do have a chance to pin Clemson beat with a good punt. Clemson decided to come with some pressure. They're going to come on the outside with the blitz. Nowhere for C.J. Brown to go. And the important thing, if you're going to blitz him, make sure you contain him when you blitz. And Corey Eco Hawkins comes off the edge there and contains him and forces the, uh, the sack by Branch. Ferrara to punt. Hopkins standing at the 10. This is the fifth punt tonight for the Terrapins. Gets it off in time. It's a high booming kick. Hits at the six. Oh, and Maryland can't keep it out of the end zone. It's a touchback. And Clemson will have it at the 20, a 45 yard punt. All right, Amish, thank you very much. And they're going to say uh, that Watkins was down. He made the catch, but he was down. It's a loss of two. You know, get, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead, no, Chris. you get the feeling that Sammy Watkins is just starting to heat up here yeah. in the second half, and they're going to try to give him the football any way that they can. They tried to get it to him in space there, but uh, 
Pass was a little low, so now second and 11. As they say it was a loss of one. Now pumping is Boyd. Coming back to the football. It was uh, Jerron Brown that time. And he'll pick up four. So third and long for Clemson. And this might be it for the third quarter. It is. So now Clemson will be going into the wind. There's a little bit of a breeze here tonight. I don't know if it's going to be a significant factor, but thought we'd mention it. As Clemson has a third down and seven coming up, down by three, heading into the fourth quarter. Clay Matvick, Brian Greasy, Allison Williams back here in College Park. We start the fourth quarter. It has been exciting. Clemson with a third and seven at their own 23-yard line. Down three. The number eight team in the country, an upset alert. Boyd steps up. Needs the 30-yard line, and it looks like he may have gotten it. It's going to be close. Trenton Hughes stepped up to knock him down. It appears like he might have the first down. Yes. That's a gutsy run by a very talented quarterback. Yeah, good decision by Taj Boyd. Maryland only rushes three. They drop eight. Nowhere to throw the football. And in those instances, you've got to make a play with your feet. Ooh. I don't know. His knee was down before yeah. he crossed the 30-yard uh, line. They got a good spot. Boyd out to Adam Humphreys, the true freshman receiver, and he'll dive close to midfield. And another Clemson first down. I think that the spot is going to be just short of the marker. Titus Till with the tackle. Let's bring up second down and short. As if they don't have enough talent on the uh, freshman roster for Clemson with Sammy Watkins and Sharon Peak and Martavius Bryant. Then you throw in Adam Humphreys, the fourth true freshman receiver that they have used extensively this season. Deep drop for Taj Boyd hits Allen right over the middle. Inside the 40 yard line. Alex Twine the tackle but it'll be first down and 10 at the 39 as Clemson is driving again. The problem with Dwayne Allen is you can't play man coverage on him because you don't have a linebacker that can run with him. But when you play zone he's got a great feel to get in between the zones and make himself friendly to the quarterback and he's got great hands. Boyd. Double play fake rolls to his right, throws it out to Humphreys, gets out of a tackle, and he's going to be close to another first down. The elusiveness of these receivers, too, after making catches has been very impressive. Yeah, and I think you're starting to see, Clay, that these defenses are getting tired. When you get tired on defense, then you start missing tackles. And that's exactly what happened right there with Alex Twine, the linebacker. Had him stop for a one or two yard gain and lets him get away. Yeah, the pace of this game is really wearing on these defenses. Now, you certainly see it on this series with this Maryland defense. Another play fake. Boyd on the naked boot to the end zone. Touchdown. Jerron Brown. And Clemson goes in front. Too explosive, too much firepower, too fast. What's impressive? Got it anyway. What's impressive about this Clemson team is there's been no panic. Taj Boyd didn't have a great first half. No panic, just continue to give him opportunities to make plays, and he has led them consistently in the second half. There's a Clemson quarterback, Taj Boyd, who has really dug down here this second half. 12 of 16, 151, and three touchdowns since halftime. Clemson, the last four drives, three TDs and a field goal, and they have taken a four-point lead. There's Tony Logan on the return here for Maryland. Bounces off a man and gets across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Let's so now two receivers to either side. And on the zone, Reed Brown keeps it. And it's going to be another uh, first down. 
Gain of 10 for Brown. Wow. He, I got to be honest. He faked me out on that one. Yeah. <laughs> he waited a long time to pull that was back. Jason Meggett, and, and I didn't know who had the ball. <laughs> Brown now 164 on the ground at 19 carries and a rushing touchdown. The pitch. Boy, and there was nothing there for Boykins on the edge. Jenkins the tackle. Well, you see now that Clemson is anticipating the kinds of plays that C.J. Brown will run. It's the zone read and the option off the read, and they're taking the pitch man, and they're having somebody assigned for C.J. Brown. Ninth play of the drive complete out to their 35 yard line to Boykins. A gain of seven. So third down and about two for Maryland. A critical drive for the Terrapins with just over eight minutes to go. Uh, and this is Boykins territory again here. He's been the guy on third down on the inside of the formation that's made all the plays. Zone read it's Maggot. And he's going to be close to another first down. Looks like they got it. Thompson did make the stop. This has been an impressive drive play. It hasn't been a real explosive drive, uh, but when they've needed to get the tough yards, they've made them. Season high for rushing tonight for Maryland, 270 on the ground. Brown sets up to throw. Incomplete. Good coverage. No flag down. Boykins the intended target, but Martin Jenkins got in there with a hand to knock it down. This is the same play that Boykins has made. He's going to come back out. They need to run inside with Boykins. Every route that he's run on the inside from the slot has come back outside, and now Clemson is playing that. They need to adjust. Gary Croton needs to have some in-breaking routes from the slot. Second and 10 from the 32 of Clemson. Throw incomplete. McCree saw that go through his fingertips. What a throw here. Great throw. Perfect read. It's a nice design of this play. Just get inside, turn around, and catch the football. I mean, that's the second time now that McCree has not given 100% effort to catch the football. And it's got to be. You got to think, is he thinking about getting hit? When it happens once, I give him the benefit of the doubt. If it happens twice, then it's a, then it's a pattern. So third and 10 now for Maryland. After the timeout, C.J. Brown comes underneath the first and burn. He's loose to the 10. with his second touchdown tonight. And the Terps go up again. Randy Etzel is smiling. If it works once, why not go back to it? And Gary Croton called the same play that Furstenberg scored on earlier in the game, the tight end screen. The same result for Maryland. Furstenberg had one career touchdown before tonight. That's number two tonight, and it's huge. Puts the Terrapins up by a field goal again. Furstenberg with a burst of speed here, known as a big blocker, but he's having a prime time game with two touchdowns. Puts his team on top. 48,000 on homecoming night in College Park have been treated to a delight. 45 42, Maryland goes back in front with just over seven and a half to play. Sammy Watkins from the 11. Look out. Look out. 89 yards. Whoa. Did not kick it to that guy. You've said that like three times tonight. Nobody's listening. He is too fast. He returned two punts to win a game in the last two minutes in high school. Two punts in the last two minutes. You cannot give him an opportunity. This is C.J. Spiller all over again. The all-purpose yards and the ability to make plays from Sammy Watkins is unbelievable. He made two mistakes early in the game in the return game that led to Maryland points. 
but he has more than made up for it in this game. And now Clemson goes back in front, 49 to 45. Longest play by Clemson this season. It's another touchdown for Watkins. Randy Edsel chewing out his kicker, Nick Ferrara, for kicking it to Sammy Watkins. Yeah, that's something on the sideline that you got to have that conversation with your kicker and then be on the same page. Hey, we're either going to kick it to him or not. And I think Randy Edsel was on the side of not, as he should be. We've had three lead changes in the last four minutes. Now we'll see what Maryland can do for a response. Here is Pickett. Pretty good return out close to the 35-yard line. Here's her Taco Bell game track. It's been a wild one. Wow. Look at that. And, and Taj Boyd in the second half has been phenomenal. Uh, really came back after struggling in the first half. C.J. Brown has been outstanding. Great quarterback play. But as this game comes to a close, I think they mo might both be trumped by Sammy Watkins now has broken a Clemson all-purpose record with 335 yards all-purpose. Here is Meggett. Big run across midfield and to the 43-yard line. Hawkins finally brought him down, but it's a gain of 22 and a first down for the Terps. No quit from the Terps. They've been running it all night. Brandon Thompson's not even blocked, but he just can't get to Meggett. And Megan has been churning up yards on a consistent basis now in the second half. 455 yards of total offense for Maryland. 508 for Clemson. Play fake. Screen to Furstenberg. Like a baby bull to the 37-yard line. Christian brings him down. It's a gain of five. Croton told us this week they love his toughness. Furstenberg is impressive. I mean, we've seen two very good tight ends in Dwayne Allen and now Furstenberg. He's got great. That was not an easy catch. And then to, to bowl over the defender, I mean, he's got a, a nice package of blocking and catching that he will take maybe to the NFL. And that time they shot it out to Furstenberg again, but it's incomplete. Furstenberg. Five catches for 104 yards and a couple of touchdowns, but they can't connect there. So now third and five. They're still trying to feed him, though. I mean, he, he has not been the go-to guy consistently this season for Maryland, but he certainly has been tonight. Two down territory here? Uh, I don't know. It depends on the, what the fourth down situation looks like here. It's complete. Caught at the 42. Marcus Leak, the freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, makes the grab. They get six yards back, but now it's fourth down and still a long way to go. They need to get to about the 33-yard line for a first down. Yeah, and I would think I would punt this football. You got two timeouts, six minutes left in the game. You've got to trust your punter is going to get it inside the five-yard line. Well, on fourth down and nine, Maryland going for it. They need to get to the 33. Pass incomplete. Ronnie Tyler, the intended receiver, but Sensabaugh there on coverage, and Clemson takes over on downs. Well, it's the route that they've made third down conversions consistently all game. Uh, this time it's Tyler just going to run an out route, and Sensabaugh right there anticipating that route. The ball is thrown a little bit behind, but Sensabaugh just gets in front. Moore didn't have enough time to wait on that, but Sensabaugh with a big, big deflection. Sensabaugh, Breland, Martin Jenkins. Boy, they have been good in that Clemson secondary tonight. Clemson has scored 32 points in under the last 20 minutes, but now an exchange problem there is Boyd juggled it. They're able to recover. Yeah. Second down coming up. I mean, that was a big fourth down, but don't get me wrong, this game is not over. Still five and a half minutes on the clock, and certainly if Clemson's going to be loose with the football and turn it over, this game's really not over. But even if they don't, Maryland can come up with a stop here and force a punt. Plenty of time left. Second down at 16 now after that play. Here is Watkins. They get him into space. They get some of that back. As he gets it out to the 45-yard line, Volano makes the tackle. It's a pickup of 10. 
Great effort from Joe Volano. I mean, for a defensive tackle to run down Sammy Watkins on a slip screen like that, uh, that is impressive. So now third down at six in this crowd trying to get behind this Terrapins defense. You can see Clemson slowing down the pace. They want to take as much time off the clock as they can, get in the right play, make sure they have all their adjustments. Watkins in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Taj Boyd sets up, throws, and it's a strike. Out to the 45-yard line of Maryland. It's Jerron Brown who picks up 10. Huge first down for the Tigers. Even when Sammy Watkins doesn't get the ball, he's pulling coverage. That time they run a double slant behind him. He runs the bubble screen and clears out the lane. And a great throw from Taj Boyd for a big conversion. Fourth catch tonight for Brown, 35 yards and a touchdown. There is Watkins lined up to the top of your screen on first down and 10. 523 yards now of total offense for the Tigers. Ellington gashes it up the middle, and he could be gone. Touchdown! A 44-yard touchdown run for Andre Ellington. And that might be a haymaker. This turned into a track meet here in the fourth quarter. I don't know who's faster. Watkins, Ellington, Bellamy, who knows? Catanzaro with the extra point. And it's an 11 point lead now for Clemson with under four to go. This play was just executed perfectly. Watch the tight end. This is Dwayne Allen. He's going to come down and get the block that seals it. And then number 48 Franklin is going to take a bad angle on Ellington. There's the block by Allen and then Franklin takes a bad angle. He just misjudged the speed from Andre Ellington and that's a house call. After the first drive of the third quarter, Maryland had a 35 to 17 lead, an 18 point advantage on Clemson. Since then, the Tigers have outscored the Terps 39 to 10. Logan out to the 32. Megat in the backfield with C.J. Brown. Brown steps up, has a lot of room. And he'll get to the 49. Robinson ran him out, but a gain of 17. He no stops the clock. No matter how this game ends, I think that Maryland has found their quarterback. I mean, this yeah. kid is fast. He's smart. He's making good decisions. And we've seen C.J. Brown really grow up and impress tonight. Pick up the pressure. It's complete to Marcus Leak. And he'll get four. Second down and six as Robinson is again in on the stop. And this is a good Clemson defense uh, that C.J. Brown is making uh, all this, this yardage on tonight. I mean, they certainly have not played well tonight, giving up 45 points, but it's a team that held Virginia Tech to three points. And this should have been caught by Leak, but it's not. So now third down and six. Yeah, you're right. Clemson coming in, Brian, the 24th best defense in the country yep. in scoring defense. And yeah, when you go to Blacksburg and you hold the Hokies to a field goal, you're pretty good. Tonight, uh, maybe an anomaly for the Tigers. C.J. Brown having a lot to do with that. He's been outstanding. Takes it out of the gun here with three minutes to go, and he's in trouble. And pulled down at the 34-yard line by Andre Branch. And when he gets his paws on you, very seldom do you get away. It's a loss of 20. Well, now Maryland's in a situation down 11 where they have to throw the football. And that's, that's not the way that their offense is built. And they're built to be mobile with the quarterback. And when you drop back in the pocket, now you put the pressure on your offensive line. And this offensive line is just not going to be able to block Andre Branch, Malachi Goodman, and some of these guys coming off the edge for, for Clemson. That's a pretty good display of arm strength. Throws it again here, and this time it's incomplete. And Clemson will take over. 
as Kerry Boykins can't make the catch. And the Clemson crowd that is here in College Park comes to its feet with a minute 54 to go as they're breathing a sigh of relief now. For a long time in this football game, it looked bad for the Tigers. They were down 18 at one point. Well, they've been through this before here against Maryland, having lost uh, the last two times they came down here against the ranked Clemson team. And they certainly did not think that this game was over till that last pass. Well, tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game is that guy, Sammy Watkins. Three touchdowns, one in the return game. 345 all-purpose yards. And the clock is going to run out on the Maryland Terrapins here tonight. But what an effort and what a game. C.J. Brown, 339 total yards and four touchdowns. Boyd, 270 passing, four touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, it was a track meet, like you said. But number eight perseveres and prevails. 56-45, the final. Dabo Sweeney just got out of the reach that, of that Gatorade. Dabo says the fun's in the winning. Well, you better have fun with that Gatorade. <laughs> they'll enjoy this one for a short amount of time. Trust me, they'll look at this film and learn a lot from it. 56-45, the final. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Brian Greasy, Allison Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Clay Matfix saying...